Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about two different things. The first thing we'll talk about is the quotient to a power rule and then we're going to do some problems where we're combining all of the exponent rules that we've been working with. Please write this title at the top of your notes. Our first example is going to be starting off simple and I think this example will show how the quotient to a power rule works. So we know that one half to the third power, the fraction one half is considered a quotient. Basically I like to think about that exponent three almost like the distributive property. It's going to apply to both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, one way of thinking about it is we know that one half to the third power means one half times one half times one half. And if we just think multiplying fractions, we multiply all of our numerators together, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and all of our denominators together, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. With the quotient rule, basically we think about that that power of 3 applies to everything in our numerator, so 1 to the third power, and everything in our denominator, so also 2 to the third power, which still gives me 1 eighth. It's just two different ways of thinking about it. Please write down example two. This one's just a little bit tougher. We're still going to apply that same rule where we remember that our outer exponent will apply to everything in our numerator and everything in our denominator. So that means we're going to have c squared to the third power over four to the third power. Now in the numerator, if we remember our power to a power rule, c squared to the third power means we'll multiply our exponent. That'll give us c to the sixth power over four to the third power. If we're going to leave our answer in exponential form, we could stop right here. However, if we would like to, since our numerical exponents we can calculate, c to the sixth power over four times four times four, which is 64. There's our final answer. Okay, please write down example three. This one's gonna be no problem as long as we understand this rule. So, that two exponent on the outside will apply to everything in our numerator. I'm gonna rewrite that to say negative two to the second power times x to the second power times y to the tenth power, applying my power to a power rule there. All that will go over y to the sixth power, applying my power to a power rule here. Okay, now, I'm also noticing that numerically, I can solve negative two squared. Negative two squared means negative two times negative two, which will give me a positive four x squared y to the tenth over y to the sixth. Last but not least, I notice that I have y's in both the numerator and the denominator. So I can now apply my quotient rule and subtract my exponents because both of my base numbers are y there. That'll give me 4x squared y to the fourth over 1, or just 4x squared y to the fourth. Done. Okay, let's make sure that we add this rule to our notes. The quotient to a power rule states, if you have a quotient that is raised to a power, you apply the power to all terms in the numerator and all terms in the denominator. Please pause the video to write this down. Please write down example four and we're going to focus on how to combine all the different exponent rules that we've been working with. For this example, the first rule that I'm going to apply to the problem is the product of powers rule and I'm using that rule in the numerator of my problem. 
because I'm multiplying all of these uh, power terms together. Now in a previous video I talked about categorizing and I always like to combine things that are alike first. So I'm going to multiply my 2 times my 4. Those are just my big basic numbers and I'm going to get 8. Then I'm going to multiply with that the x to the third term and the x squared term. So all those things will get multiplied together and that's going to give me 8x to the fifth because with the product of powers rule I add the exponents of numbers that have the same base. Now on the bottom, the numerator, I still have 2x to the fourth. So I'm just going to bring that over. Okay, now that I'm here, I'm going to apply my quotient rules. So with my quotient, I have 8 divided by 2. I like to separate my numerical terms from my variable terms. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. With my x terms, I have x to the fifth divided by x to the fourth. And if I use my quotient rule, x's are the same base, x in the numerator and denominator, I'll subtract my exponents and get x to the first, which I can just write as x. So my final answer is 4x. Done. Let's take a look at example 5. Please write this down. For this problem, the first rule I'm going to apply is the power to a power rule. This part of the problem right here has that outer exponent. Remember with the power to a power rule, that outer exponent 3 is going to apply to every term in that parenthesis. So that's going to give me 2 to the third times a to the fifteenth, remember with power to a power we multiply exponents, times c to the sixth. I'm still going to take that whole product that I just came up with and multiply it times my 5a squared c from my first parenthesis. But that third power there on the outside only applies to the parenthesis that it immediately follows. So that only applies to this part of our problem. Okay, now this is where I like to group things together. Regular numbers are going to get multiplied by regular numbers. So I'm going to do 5 times 2 to the third. Next, I'm going to group my a's together. I've got an a squared and an a to the fifteenth. Lastly, I've got a c, which it means c to the first, times a c to the sixth. Okay, what I'm really doing right here is now applying the product of powers rule. Okay, so when I multiply my whole numbers together, 2 to the third power is equal to 8, and 5 times 8 gives me 40. a squared times a to the 15th with the product of powers rule, that means if they have the same base number, I add their exponents, will give me a to the 17th. And c to the 1st times c to the 6th will give me c to the 7th. Done. All right, people, last example, and I'm calling this one the Mac Daddy. This problem has a lot going on. All right, our first job is going to be to take care of my power to a power rule things that I've got going on, and I have them going on here. Here's another one that I'll do separately. And in the denominator, I'm going to have to do power to a power again. So I'm going to do all my separate power to a powers first. So for that first grouping, I have negative 2 squared. 
Now I have x to the third squared, which will give me x to the sixth. And then I have y squared. In that second grouping in the numerator, I have negative x, and I put it in parentheses because of the negative, to the third power, times y to the fourth to the third power, which will give me y to the twelfth. All that will go over in the denominator 3 to the 4th power times x to the 8th power times y to the 8th power. Okay, my next job is to clean up this mess that I've got going on in the numerator. And to do that, I'm going to be using the product of powers rules. Okay? I'm going to group things together to make that happen. So in the just numeric part, no variable, I have negative 2 squared. That means negative 2 times negative 2, which gives me 4. I also have negative x to the third power. Okay, let's just take that aside for a second. Negative x to the third power can also be thought of as negative 1 times x to the third power. I think I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to take that negative 1 and multiply it times my 4 here. And negative 1 times 4 gives me negative 4. Okay, now I can combine my x to the third power with my x to the sixth power from over here. x to the third times x to the sixth will give me x to the ninth. Last but not least, I've got y squared times y to the twelfth, which will give me y to the fourteenth. Okay, in the denominator, 3 to the fourth power means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which I know is 81. x to the eighth, y to the eighth. All right, our last job is to apply our quotient rule and simplify what we've got going on here. So here's what we have. And right now, if I think about separating in terms of things that are alike, numerically, negative 4 over 81, I can't do anything with that. So that'll stay negative 4 over 81. For my x's, I have x to the ninth divided by x to the eighth. That's going to give me x to the first, or just x if you prefer. And lastly, my y's. I have y to the fourteenth divided by y to the eighth. Remember, we'll subtract our exponents. 14 minus 8 is 6, so I have y to the 6th. So my final answer is negative 4xy to the 6th over 81. Whew, that was a tough one. All right, guys, good luck on your homework.